begin, so I'm going to make it quick. My very special guest tonight is uh, one of the most distinguished men in the field of animation, theatrical and television animation. Uh, his name is really legendary as a craftsman. It goes right up there with the other gentlemen we've talked about on the show before, like Ted Avery and Chuck Jones and all the rest of them. And, and this man sitting to my left is probably... Well, he may be the greatest animator, really, of all time. That, that, that sounds like a fair assumption. I'm talking, of course, about Preston Blair, who is our very special guest this evening. Very nice to have you with us. Well, we have got so much material to cover. Let's get right into it. Uh, let me help you out. First of all, let's get a little background very quickly. How did you break into the animation? Who did you work with? Uh, I started in at uh, Universal with Walter Lance way back in the 30s. And... Uh, that was in the Carl Levelin period. And uh, Tex Avery was working there at that time. Jerry Geronimi and a lot of the other fellows. And uh, I was there just about a year. Then I went over to uh, Columbia Pictures. And uh, from there I finally went to the... I decided to take the business seriously. But before this time I was just uh, working like a fellow would be with a, uh, with a job in a garage or something like that. I figured, well, I better take the business seriously after I see some of our products. And uh, I went over to the Disney studio and uh, happened to be there during the Golden Era. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, what we have at the Whitney Museum this time. And uh, uh, I was there until uh, in the 40s, which, and after that I went over to Metro. And uh, for a while I was with Tex, uh, animating his epics and his uh, uh, great hot writing with girls and uh, the, the, the short that we're going to be singing tonight called Turkey Turkey. And uh, uh, then I directed uh, this character here, Barney Bear, for a while. And uh, after that, I decided to become an illustrator. So I went to Westport. And that's another story, and, uh, uh, as is my experience in the last many years as a cartoon producer. Wow, well, that comes a lot to tell but we've got enough to talk about. Well, you said this material that's connected with the collection to the Whitman Museum. Sure. Right. Right. We want to mention that right away, right off the bat, that there was a tremendous, tremendous exhibit of Walt Disney material here in New York at the Whitman Museum, and uh, that exhibit is running through September 6th. And we recommend that if you have not been over there yet, run, don't walk to the Whitman Museum, because not only can you see film uh, from the Disney period, the prime theatrical period, but you can also see Great, great, great artifacts, and drawings, cells, and some of which we're going to be seeing tonight, by the way. Preston, you have right there a I model. Have, I have a model uh, that was used uh, to animate the hippo. And this is a character I designed uh, for Fantasia. And this uh, this uh, little girl here is called Hyacinth. Hyacinth. And she does her little ballet in the Fantasia with the greatest of ease. And uh, these were these were designed uh, based on these uh, model sheets that uh, that uh, we made here too. We're taking a look at those because we have uh, This is the other character here, the uh, the hip one. You can see how she uh, is uh, is a naturally designed dancer. You can see that. Now, what are these? Are these plaster Paris? Or these uh, are uh, these are the original. They're plaster Paris, and they've been. Uh, They've been painted to uh, resemble the color of the, uh, of the character. But these were actually made now by the animators to work. These uh, these are the original uh, uh, model sheets uh, that I made here of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, character. All right, and but the animators actually did they did they draw from these? These uh, these, uh, these uh, we we drew from these uh, from these uh, uh, from these uh, models, and we drew from the, uh, the model sheets. And, and we used live action, of course, and we used uh, 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 dead reckoning. When you when you animate, it's a calculated this uh, thing, and you have you use every bit of research that you can possibly get. And that was one of the secrets of their success. They were very strong on research. They had all sorts of people. They even had James Wong Howe photographing the uh, uh, research for them at that time. And uh, this uh, we had a. Uh, Research of a, a, a very heavy elderly ballerina jumping around for this character here. But of course, uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the humor in the thing was is, is in the animation and the straight ahead in the post test animation. This this character involved. I 
hope she didn't recognize herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there's all sorts of things like that. The, uh, the pedo uh, uh, was, uh, was the Christian rule. And you know, he was Christian rule was based on uh, uh, an actor by the name of, uh, of uh, Christian rule was the actor. Uh, and Geppetto was based on him. And uh, uh, on, he can recognize himself in that character, but then the other characters, of course, are uh, uh, lost. And uh, this fox and the cat here had famous actors that, uh, that helped them out. And we studied all these people, every little action that they, uh, that they had. In fact, Will himself, uh, we, we, I remember doing a thing on the wheelers, or at the, at the pointer. And uh, I was called in there and, 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 and to see the great boy himself go through the contours of the country. And then you would uh, uh, study these things and uh, try to get it into the animation. And also, uh, put your imagination in there, which sure. this studio was very famous for, it still is. And that is why that, uh, 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 well, these classics that we're talking about really were to hang together. You know, you see, there's just nothing that they're... It's just, it's just like the, a great, it's just like a novel. The novel and the Tom Jones was the first novel in the detective story. Uh, you know, that that type of long brother detective story is a type of novel. And it's never been equal, but there's been many other kinds. The same way with these things here. They're a uh, they're, uh, thing of, of their own. But they will be uh, the other great characters in this time goes on. I'm sure. Oh, well, I hope so. Let's take a look right now, very quick, at some videotape footage of some very, very rare uh, pencil test footage. We're going to show this real quick. This happens to be, I hope the light isn't glaring too badly on this. This is a, a stack of the original pencil drawings made by Preston Blair for Fantasia. And we're going to be uh, seeing... Ricky and the Sorcerers of the Prince. And we're going to be seeing this scene as it appeared on film, the original test footage that uh, Walt decided to... Uh, what you're looking at, on. what you're looking at here is a is a something from the cartoonist profile magazine. This, this is just a proof from one of their magazines. But what you're going to look at is what it, how it appears in a pencil test on your uh, test of the consumers. Well, as much as that does not have sound, let's talk right over that. So you can run that pencil test any time. And Preston, as I understand, that, uh, that carried the idea to the point where they were it was going to be Fantasia, and that, that little, little, very few people know that Fantasia was only the beginning step of a project that was going to be like the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. Uh, we were going to be able to go to a, to a show every evening and see a different uh, Fantasia every night for a week. And this project is still uh, in the drawing board stages. Maybe one of these days it will come to, to uh, being, and I hope so. So now, sir. In other words, there's three or four episodes of Fantasia that have never been shown. They're just in the right. waiting to be shown. Now, is there pencil material or animation drawings on this? Uh, so they are, they are, they're just a part of the movie made, and then they're abandoned because at that time the financial problems were just horrendous. Mm -hmm. and, Fantasia uh, was a long and costly undertaking. It was, and it didn't make, uh, it just uh, didn't uh, uh, get its money back in the course. It's uh, gone to uh, history now. It's a classic that will go on for hundreds of years, I'm sure. Sure, sure. as long as film will go on. Just yeah. like this novel, Tom Jones, I was talking about, go on for hundreds of years. Uh, so, that, uh, 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 but this, uh, this, uh, this uh, 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 film that we've just seen, I think, there, uh, was uh, the very first start, just by coincidence. So I just have to pick this thing up by coincidence. And so I picked that up. Uh, and, uh, and we had an athlete working out that we used an athlete from UCLA to jump over barrels in this scene. And uh, we studied this after this, uh, this action, and uh, I followed his rules. And uh, that helped out with the action of, uh, of this scene that you just see. We were jumping through the, uh, the water there. And a, a lot of uh, French animation was put in, of course, with this. Uh, uh, with this and the, uh, the, uh, Animation that have to be put in the background to make it work out. Well, it's a fascinating, it's a classic, as we've said, it's an enduring masterpiece. And we're going to be seeing some more examples, we're going to be seeing those model sheets of the hippos later on. But now we're going to skip ahead a few years right. to an MGF short circa 1945. Whoops, there goes one of our posters. And right now, <laughs> we are going to, folks, this is it, this is real fun. We're not going to pay this. Oh, okay, all right, fine. Well, we're going to go to the 
this one right now, which is a cartoon which was originally uh, wrestling player animated under the direction of Tex Avery. Right? Yes, and we're going to have we're going to show you the original model sheet of this uh, cartoon. And before we uh, uh, after you see the cartoon, I want to show you some of the action uh, from the cartoon. Terrific. Let's do that right now. Let's see a few minutes from a 1945 MGM cartoon, Jerky Turkey. That, of course, was from the year 1944. I stand corrected. I said 1945. And that Jerky Turkey, which was uh, produced and directed by Ted Avery uh, and animated by Preston Blair. We have here the original model sheet for the character Pinhead, Jerky Turkey. As you can see, these are, uh, you can recognize the line in there of the famous New Yorker cartoonist Paul. His name is Paul Smith. And uh, this was before his career at the New Yorker. He was the the uh, model uh, man in the Avery uh, uh, for that uh, for that short that you just seen. So the talent there was extensive. Oh, I, I can well imagine. Here's a uh, here's a uh, another character that uh, Claude uh, designed. Oh, here's a screwball squirrel, and uh, this was an Avery uh, success. Avery had the idea that he was going to make a, uh, that this character was going to become another Bugs Bunny. Of course, it didn't work out that way. But the antics of this uh, fellow, of course, are, are, st are famous, you know. Oh, yes. Animation buffs everywhere are uh, very fond of the Screwy Squirrel. And Screwy is, is probably the only character that actually gets killed off in one of his yeah. own cartoons. But he finally <laughs> killed him away. They did away with him. Here's another, uh, another uh, uh, picture of the model sheet. Where, in which uh, he uh, uh, he uh, uh, becomes uh, uh, the, the same character we saw on the last short, uh, and this is a, another picture in which this character appears. Another uh, model sheet, another picture. Now, how was it working with NGN in terms of of time, monetary considerations? Did you find it pretty much the same as Disney, or was it a different kind of show? Well, I went there on a, uh, when I went to Disney's, it was a, a, a very competitive situation. There were a lot of people there. And when I went to MGM, I frankly, back on the outside of the business, I was much better known. I was a director of MGM. And uh, uh, I had known Avery many years before, and we really uh, had a wonderful time. We were working there during the war with the real ball. Uh, that was one of, the, uh, one of the real experiences of my life. I really. Uh, uh, he, Avery was a great, uh, uh, funny cartoonist, and uh, we greatly miss him. Passed away last year. Passed away last year. He was working with uh, Hannah Barbera at the time. And uh, we had a lot of fun there doing these things. During that 40s period, you and Tex created quite a, quite a sensation with a character which uh, animation was referred to as the girl character. Yeah. She appeared in several shorts. Little uh, red hot riding hood, and right. has graciously brought from his own archives some of the. Uh, well, here she is. You can take a look at her. I think what we have to do is tilt that a little bit forward so the light does. Well, that, that, that's okay like that, yep. Now we're getting a look here at the wolf. So the premise of this was that there was a wolf, a lecherous character, who was crazy right. about this girl. Uh, and uh, the, the, this was a red hot riding hood, and the story was based on a Peter Arnold type grandmother mother instead, who was crazy about the wolf. <laughs> and uh, uh, it started out that way, but uh, uh, we animated this girl, and the reaction uh, of the uh, wolf to the girl was, was, was still. It, Tremendous success, and uh, we started in, and we animated a few scenes, and Avery recognized, realized that uh, something was going to happen with this cartoon. And uh, when this cartoon was first released, they showed it in uh, theaters in New Jersey and places like that, and it created such an uproar that they were forced to stop the feature and run back and run over the cartoon. So as a result, then Metro then uh, jumped on the bandwagon and ran full page of variety ads on this cartoon. And there were several other versions of what I read. And uh, I had a wonderful time drawing this girl. I spent a lot of time um, putting this beautiful volume together. You know, can well in animation. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. As we can see here, this is actually this, this color drawing appearing next to the magazine reproduction. is actually part of the original cell, the original animation cell. 
that was used for that. And let's say you have a you have some of these ads. And, oh, here's something we want to get to. This is nice because this is something you don't see anymore. This is something you won't see on TV because it's dated and uh, propagandistic, supposed to close. This was Avery's uh, first short when he went to uh, Metro from uh, MGM. He was doing the war, and he made this short called Blitz Wolf, in which the wolf was Hitler. And uh, Hitler was attacking the three pigs in their camp. And uh, of course, it was a, <laughs> it was a hilarious part. And uh, we had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, this would have been around what year? Uh, this was around 1942, so something like that. And something that you'll never see in like that. The last frame, the end title, it says The End of Adolf, with the legend beneath, If you'll buy a stamp or bond, we'll skin that skunk across the pond. Uh, referring to Hitler, and that was, of course, characteristic of the uh, sentiment of the era, and it got, got in everywhere. Uh, here he is here again, uh, Adolf, and he's in his strut. And this is a picture of one of the pigs. Now, this again looks like from the original cells. Uh, this is the storyboard here from Pinocchio of the uh, Fox and the Cat that I animated, seeing I did Lee and acted like the pig. So uh, I've got all sorts of things in this book. We could spend an hour and a half talking about it. Yeah. We could. We've got all kinds of here's the owl in the in the fan and Bambi that uh, uh, pulled the uh, thunder in the uh, ear. All my love and the famous Cooter made his speech. And uh, that was a lot of fun to do, too. And then this, of course, here is the, the our drawings from the uh, that are now at the Whitney Museum. These drawings here of these are in the hippo. Yeah, these are at the, at the, at the, at the Whitney Museum. Uh, let, let's see the cover. I have a new book. Last book, the book by all means. This is the, this yeah. is the original edition. That is the original edition. Where's where the, uh, where the other original? There we go, as our technicians rush these. This is the cover of the, of, the, uh, of the new book that I brought out, and this is the other book that is uh, is now over a million. This is a textbook on animation that's used in the various schools and colleges throughout the country. And it has a, uh, a, a picture of the alligators in here, uh, the beginning alligator. And uh, it also has a, a, a lot of drawings of Red Hot in here, too. Here we go. Let's, let's get this. This is a, a really, and I say this without any exaggeration, this is a treasure trove of material for those of you who are interested in the work of Preston Blair. It has marvelous, marvelous illustrations, many of them in color. And uh, besides just as a how to manual, it's a real collector's item, and it's well, well worth the price. We recommend get this. This is a new edition, right? This is a new edition. And this is really, for those of us who can't afford the hundreds of thousands of dollars that sells, original sells and artwork bring, this is as good as anything. Well, uh, I just talked to Frank Thomas just now, right? and his new book is coming out, and I also recommend that. It's called The Animation, Disney Animation, The Illusion of Life. And it's a beautiful book. It's going to come out in the new in, in, in September, but it's going to sell for 50 dollars. Uh, these sell for wow. two dollars. <laughs> so we'll be the new ones. What's the better buy? I would. Uh, if anybody's serious about the business, I know they'll get this book at the yep. at the beginning one, and this other one augments that. And of course, they would buy the Frank Thomas book too. Uh, if they're interested in the business, or anybody that's interested in animation, let's do a, an anecdote. We can real quick in one minute. Of what happened to you after you originally wrote out this first edition? You had a an experience there. <laughs> so I started out with this thing. I thought I was uh, 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 could use a lot of the characters without any of uh, the rights because I've been doing a lot of the, uh, that sort of thing in publicity there. And uh, I put together this book and I uh, got sort of in a, uh, in, a, uh, in a crossfire between the Disney studio and the, uh, the, the MGM studio. And uh, I had to uh, re redo this book in a uh, in uh, in uh, with a different character. So this the the, the one that is uh, the main book is uh, and, uh, has has most of these uh, things in it, but there uh, the characters have been changed. So in other words, you couldn't use those famous main characters. Uh, I couldn't use these uh, uh, a lot of the characters. I had to change the characters, but they're very easy to change, and uh, we had no trouble at all in, uh, in uh, getting the thought across. It's in this. Uh, 
the animation the story that we want to tell uh, uh, the thing that listen to there. And I put it in the office by I know the panic can be a panic the death of the We have got so much show for you tonight, I hardly know where to begin, so we're going to make it quick. My very special guest tonight is uh, one of the most distinguished men in the field of animation, theatrical and television animation. Uh, his name is really legendary as a press, and it goes right up there with the other gentlemen we've talked about on the show before, like Ted Savory and Chuck Jones and all the rest of them. And, and this man sitting to my left is probably... Well, he may be the greatest animator, really, of all time. Is that, that, that sounds like a fair assumption. I'm talking, of course, about Preston Blair, who is our very special Thank guest you. this evening. Very nice to have you with us. Well, we have got so much material to cover. Let's get right into it. Uh, let me help you out. First of all, let's get a little background break with you. How did you break into the animation? Who did you work with? Well, I started in at uh, Universal with Walter Lance way back in the 30s. And... Uh, that was in the Carl Lemley period. And uh, Tex Avery was working there at that time. Jerry Geronimi and a lot of the other fellows. And uh, I was there just about a year. And then I went over to uh, Columbia Pictures. And uh, from there I finally went to the, I decided to take the business seriously. But before this time, I was just uh, working like a fellow would be in, with, a, uh, with a job in a garage or something like that. I figured, well, I better take the business seriously after I'd seen some of our products. And uh, I went over to the Disney studio and uh, had to be there during the Golden Era. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, what we have at the Golden Museum this time. And uh, uh, I was there until uh, in the 40s, which, and after that I went over to Metro. And uh, for a while I was with Tex, uh, animating his epics and his uh, uh, great hunt writing with girls and uh, the, the, the short that we're going to be seeing tonight called Jersey Turkey. And uh, uh, then I directed uh, this character here, Barney Bear, for a while. And uh, after that, I decided to become an illustrator. So I went to Westport. Yeah. Uh, but that's another story. And uh, 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 as is my experience in the last many years as a cartoon producer. Well, uh, that covers a lot of terror, But we've got enough to talk about. Well, you've been. This material that's connected is cogent to the Whitman Museum. Right. Right. We want to mention that right away, right off the bat, that there is a tremendous, tremendous exhibit of Walt Disney material here in New York at the Whitman Museum. And uh, that exhibit is running through September 6th. And we recommend that if you have not been over there yet, run, don't walk to the Whitman Museum because not only can you see films uh, from the Disney period, the prime theatrical period, but you can also see great, great, great artifacts, of drawing cells, and some of which we're going to be seeing tonight, by the way. Preston, you have right there a I model. Have, I have a model uh, that was used uh, to animate the hippo. And this is a character I designed uh, for Fantasia. And this uh, this uh, little girl here is called Hyacinth. Hyacinth. And she does her little ballet in the Fantasia with the greatest of ease. And they're uh, these were these were designed uh, based on these uh, model sheets that, uh, that uh, we made here too. We're taking a look at those, it was good. Yeah. Now this is the other character here, the uh, the hippo. You can see how she uh, is uh, is a naturally designed dancer. You can see that. Now what are these? Are these plaster Paris? Or these uh, are uh, these are the original. They're plaster Paris, and they've been. Uh, They've been painted to uh, resemble the color of the, uh, of the character. But these were actually made now. The animators can work. These, uh, these are the original uh, uh, model sheets uh, that I made here of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, character. All right, and, but the animators actually did they did they draw from these? These, uh, these, these, these uh, we, we drew from these uh, from these uh, uh, from these uh, models, and we drew from the, uh, the model sheets. And, and we used live action, of course, and we used uh, 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 Jeff Reckoning, 
when you when you animate, it's a calculated this thing, and you had to use every bit of research that you could possibly get. And that was one of the secrets of their success. They were very strong on research. They had all sorts of people. They even had James Wong Howe photographing the uh, research for them at that time. And uh, this, uh, we had a uh, research of a, uh, a very heavy elderly ballerina jumping around for this kind of career. But of course, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the humor in the thing is, is, is in the animation and the straight ahead in the post test of animation of this, this character. I hope she didn't recognize herself. <laughs> oh no, there's all sorts of things like that. The uh, the pedo uh, uh, was the was the Christian Rude. I don't think it's Christian Rude based on the, uh, an actor by the name of uh, uh, Christian Rude was the actor, uh, and the pedo was based on him. And uh, uh, well, he can recognize himself in that character, but the, the, the other character of course is uh, uh, lost and uh, responsible and cat here had famous actors that. Uh, that helped them out. And we studied all these people, every little action that they, uh, that they had. In fact, Will himself, uh, we, we, I remember doing a thing on the wheels, or uh, at the end of pointer. And uh, I was called in there and, 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 and to see the great boy himself go through the contortions. And, and then you would uh, uh, study these things and try to get it into the animation. And also, uh, put your imagination in there, which this sure. studio was very famous for, I'm sure it still is. And that is why that uh, 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 well, these classics that we're talking about really were but hang together. You know, obviously there's just nothing that they. It's just, just like a great. It's just like a novel. You know, the novel. The Tom Jones was the first novel of the detective story. Or, I mean, that, that type of novel. I thought it'd be detective story. It's a type of a novel. And it's never been equal. But there's been many other kinds. The same way with these things here. They're uh, they're a uh, thing of their own. But they will, uh, there'll be other great cartoons as time goes on, I'm sure. Oh, well, well I hope so. Let's take a look right now, very quick, at some videotape footage of some very, very rare uh, pencil test footage. We're going to show this real quick. This happens to be, I hope the light isn't glaring too badly on this. The, this is a, a stack of the original pencil drawings made by Preston Blair for Fantasia, and we're going to be uh, seeing... Mickey and the Sorcerer's Apprentice. And we're going to be seeing this scene as it appeared on film, the original test footage that uh, Walt decided to... Uh, what you're looking at, on. what you're looking at here is a, is a something from the cartoonist's profile magazine. This, this is just a proof from one of their magazines. But what you're going to look at is what it, how it appears in a pencil test on your uh, test of film that ensues. Well, as much as that does not have sound, let's talk right over that. So you can run that pencil test any time. And Preston, as I understand, that uh, that carried the idea to the point where there was it was going to be Fantasia, and then the little, the, uh, very few people know that Fantasia was only the beginning step of a project that was going to be like the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. Uh, we we're going to be able to go to a, to a show every evening and see a different uh, Fantasia every night for a week. And this project is still uh, in the drawing board stage. Maybe one of these days it will come to your well-being. I hope so.